All right, I'm on time, yay! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it some time for folks to get on and get set and get ready. Um, I'm very, very excited about tonight's scope. I'm looking forward to this. Really, really looking forward to this. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're very, very excited about what God is going to do tonight. Amen. So, looking forward to to sharing some things with you. Wait for folks to get on. If I have some first-time viewers, please feel free to let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. Uh, give yourself a shout-out. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. So, um, when I, I want to share with you uh, the reason why I am doing this particular scope tonight. Um, it looks like Monday night might end up being my time. So, love you. Love you back. Black party started early. <laughs> Amen. You are not new, James. Stop playing. Anyway, that's my husband. Uh, the J. Harold Show, that is my husband. And for those of you who follow people, when people say that, please understand, my husband is silly. Um, he has very little sense. Um, and so he does very silly scopes. So just be prepared for that. So you're not going to get <laughs> him uh, preaching very often, but he does play music and he does uh, share uh, his perspective, which is always good and refreshing. Anyway, all right. Don't be explaining me. Of course I'm going to explain you. You know how it is. All right, so I'm excited about this, and uh, I want to jump in, but I'm giving folks, hey, Shamika, good to see you. Bless you. Thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, so if I've got some first-time folks, let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. Hello, hello. Hey, Janet, good to see you. Hi, Deborah. Bless you. Good to see you. So um, I'm not going to belabor the time. Thank you for those who are getting on. I'm trying to give time for folks to get on. Let me see the hearts. I don't usually ask for hearts, but let me see if you're there. Yay, you made it. You made it, Shamika. Love you too, Janet. Good to see you. Hello, hello, Silent King. Good to see you. Bless you. Uh, you follow me on Twitter, right? Bless you. Good to see you. Hey, Bettina. Bless you, daughter. Good to see you. First time from Maryland. Bless you, Alvina. Good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Pastor Morris, God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Yes. I knew that was you, Silent Night. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Um, so I wanted to share with you. I'm just going to jump right into at least this part to give you some perspective. That's my best friend, Erica. Love you. Mwah. Good to see you. This is not your first time from this scope. Ha ha. Uh, that is my brother in the ministry, <laughs> Prophet JD. Uh, so follow him. He's awesome. Um, and I'm waiting for you to do another scope, bro. Okay. So anyway, um, I wanted to share with you why this perspective is here. Hi, Denard. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You're closing and you're listening. Okay. Oh, you're taking care of business. Take care. Do, do, do your work, Elaine. No, no getting fired. Okay. Bless you from North Carolina. Good to see you. Thank you for joining me tonight. So let me share with you as everyone's still kind of coming on and saying, Hey, bless you, Bettina. That's my daughter. Good to see you. Glad you're on. Thank you for uh, inviting followers. For those of you who are on, I never normally ask you to invite followers, but please uh, slide over and invite followers to this tonight. This is going to be an encouraging word for those of you who've been waiting in the wings. And you know, there's a book that calls, that's called Ladies in Waiting. Um, it is called Ladies in Waiting. And I don't think that this is just for women. This is for men as well. There are many of us who are waiting in the wings. We are waiting to be released and let loose. We are as, as the horses that are getting ready to run the Preakness. We're getting ready to, to run the this marathon race and we are at the gates getting ready to be released and the Lord wanted me to to, to issue a word with you uh, to issue a word to you just in this season hi bless you for right where you are oh so you, you invited a friend Janet thank you hi Vanessa bless you um, you are divorced does that apply amen but if you're waiting in the wings this is more about your ministry this is less about um, getting mates this is less about you really getting a job. This is less about that. This is about the kingdom. And so I tend to talk and do periscopes about the kingdom, the kingdom advancing, the kingdom coming. We are kingdom folks. And so this is more what it's about. But I believe even if you're a woman who's divorced, there is redemption. There is restoration. There is a new beginning. There's a, a fresh start for you. It, you know, it is not over for you if you're divorced. It's not it. Uh, product of divorce, honey, raise your hand. We both are products of divorce. And this is, we are in a second marriage. So bless God for redemption and for restoration. So I'm just trying to speak to you. So yeah, don't, don't think that divorce counts you out. God does not want to count anybody out. Amen. Amen. He is a God of re re redemption and recovery, and, uh, he will transform your circumstances from your past. So, okay, let me get 
to the scope at hand. I don't want to belabor the time too much. The reason why this came to me, literally uh, this past Sunday or uh, two Sundays ago, um, I was at a ministry where we support and he tells me different things. But honestly, God is always concerned about your heart. He's concerned about your heart. He's concerned about those things that disappoint you, those things that weigh you down, those things that cause you to uh, look at yourself in a different way, to feel like you're less than, that attack your self-confidence, your self-esteem. God is concerned about that. And oftentimes we think, just get over it, right? I know I'm a child of the king, let me just get over it. But God is interested in your process to your healing. Are you hearing me? He's interested in getting you out of that place where you feel like you're broken and bruised and cannot be used or you feel like you've been overlooked. Someone has mishandled you. Someone has forgotten about you. People have put you on the back burner. They have, they have, have, have mis, mis, uh, you know, diagnosed who you really are. They have not tr truly seen the gift that God has placed on the inside of you. And sometimes uh, they miss it. And, and you assume it's something in you. And so God is concerned about that. So let me explain to you why I'm saying he has you on reserve. In this particular service, um, the service was moving along. People were getting ready to be ministered to. And right before that happened, the Lord said to me, I have you on reserve. And I thought, okay, don't really know what that means. But God was preparing me for something. So he said, I have you on reserve. And in the midst of this moment, uh, the minister called people forward um, and he called someone else forward to help him in ministry to do and work the altar. Amen. It's wonderful. So we need to know that our season and time may not always be every single Sunday. It may not be every single time that we're in some place, but we always need to be ready. But literally the Lord said, I have you on reserve. And the Lord was protecting my heart from any disappointment I, I might feel. I am zealous for God. Now, how many of y'all know me? Y'all know that is me, right? I'm zealous for God. So I'm always ready. I'm always like, what is it you want me to do, Lord? Whatever you need to do me to do, I'm available. And so when we're like that, God sometimes has to tell us, whoa, take a step back. I I I've got you on reserve. There's something I'm saving you for. There's something that I'm preparing just for you. And it can only be you. So I have you on reserve. Have you on reserve. And so what happened in this service was as they went through the line, I grabbed some Kleenex because guess what? I'm a servant. I don't care if there's something on the ground I need to pick up. I'm going to pick it up. Whatever it is, I become available for whatever the, it, it is. So I held some Kleenex while they went around. Well, then the pastor said, um, yes, he said, somebody go and hug that woman. And the Lord said, move. So in this moment, remember, God said, I have you on reserve. I went and I hugged this woman and the Lord said, she's going to hit the ground. Hold on to her. And so I held her and mind you, this is a beautiful woman, but she's a woman who's been broken. She's a woman who has never been told she's beautiful, never been told that she's worth anything. And so her self-esteem was at the lowest level. You could just see it on her. She wore her burdens like it was a coat. She wore her burdens like it was her makeup. It was on her face. It was on her body. You could just see that on her. And every time I would see her, I'd be like, God, where is the joy of the Lord? And I would pray for her and hug her and love on her. But literally this day, God said, I have you on reserve. And at that moment, he said, move. I went and I hugged this woman and I embraced her. And you know how you hug someone a longer than necessary? That one step past comfortability, that one step past being polite, now that's when ministry comes in, right? So I hug you and then I did not release her and I held her tighter and literally God said, it's going to break. It's going to break. Her, her dawn is coming. It's going to break. And I held her and I held her tighter and tighter. And before I know it, her knees begin to buckle. And the Lord had already told me she was going down. And so I went down with her and I kept holding on to her. I, and then she wept like a baby. It was not a simple cry. She wailed into my arm and into my shoulder. And I just held her and I thought, bless God, because this is her breakthrough. And I said, thank you, God, because you told me you had me on reserve, which meant that I didn't need to go around. I didn't need to catch nobody. I didn't need to pray for anybody. I didn't need to lay hands. God said, I have you on reserve. And I'm speaking to many of you who are the latter 
rain. You are the latter wine. You are that wine that Jesus brought out at Cana, right? They served this wine that was poor. And at the end, they reserved the best for last. I'm speaking to you today. And so as, as I, yes, many people don't get a touch of love. They don't get hugged. They don't get held. And so literally this woman broke in my arms. Now, this is the, the greatest part of this is not anything that I did. The greatest part is my conversation with her this past Sunday. So now look, two Sundays passed. I saw her the next Sunday. She looked very different. I mean, just, just different. I'm like, okay, something has changed about her, changed her hair color, had, wore makeup. She's smiling, laughing. She's dancing around her house. Her husband is like, what is going on with this woman? She is dancing. She's singing a song comes on and she begins to shout. And he's like, I, I don't even know who you are, but he was excited to see this new person filled with joy, literally saw her. And she says things that would get me down. My children would call me with stress. They would call me with things and they would say to themselves, oh my God. God, I know if I tell mom this, it's going to be crazy. I know if I mention it to her, she's going to go off. And they've even said it to her. And she said, and literally when they called her, she said, listen, no longer call me by that. Are, are you hearing me? No longer call me the name of misery. No longer call me the name of weary. No longer call me the name of burden because now I've got my freedom. And literally she is at peace. She says, when stuff goes on, I'm like, oh, well. I still got the joy of the Lord. Now, look at that. The transformation from where she was to what God was doing to break her out of that place. And I'm saying this to you because many of you are on reserve. Many of you, many of you are not number one at the, at the, at the bat right now. You're not in that position, but God has you on reserve. Now, we're going to get into the word. God is saving the best for last. Listen to me. There have been many of us that have been waiting in the wings. We've been waiting to be tagged into the fight. We've been waiting for God to, to loose us and let us go and run this race. We are eager to get in the fight and get in the race. But listen, our time has not yet come, but it's coming. Our time has not yet come, but it is coming. We are in the preparation stage. God is getting ready to launch us out. Let me tell you, I'm excited about this word. God is raising up and preparing a new guard to come along. Let me tell you, many that we see standing up now shall fall down. And some of them are just going to go on to be the glory and their mantle shall drop and you will be in position to receive what is coming from heaven. Are you hearing me? I am excited about this. So let's Let's get into the word. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about Jesus. Now, remember, I said first that you are that latter wine. You are that wine. We find in, uh, in the word in John 2, verse 4, we find the story of the wedding at Cana. We know this, right? We know about this wedding. We know that Jesus says, and I love this, he says to his mother in 2, 4, he says, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Are you hearing me? Jesus even told, as his, as his mom said, listen, they have run out of wine. My son, he's got miracles, I know. Now listen, I don't believe that Jesus had done any miracles before this time or we would hear it in the word. So this is his first miracle, but his mother knew what was on the inside of him. Now how many mothers know what's inside of your children? Are you hearing me? I'm not just speaking of the natural, but I'm talking about spiritual mothers and spiritual fathers. How many of you you know what's inside your children and you're beginning to call it forth. You're saying, yes, he and she shall do greater than me. How many? I didn't mean to get on a spiritual father and mother thing, but I'm telling you, there's something about knowing what your child is capable of. There's something about knowing what your child is meant to do and pushing them forward into what God has for them. So literally he's pushing, she's pushing him forward. And he's saying, listen, woman, this don't have anything to do with me. My time has not yet come. And despite the fact that his time has not yet come he still performed a miracle are you hearing me come on now <laughs> bless you Shamika you know I'm telling you this is just so good to me and so what we find in 210 it says the man who who is looking at this feast he is completely floored at the fact of what has happened and listen to this now pay attention 
he says everyone serves the good wine first and he says and when people have drunk freely then they bring the poor wine they bring this this wine that's you know not so good it's more vinegar than it is wine and and they wait till people have gotten drunk off of the good wine they 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 have that in the beginning and then they let people drink the the nasty wine later all I just got a phone call that didn't need to come in okay he says listen he says but you have kept the good wine until now now look at this this blows me away he says you have kept the good wine until now he's kept it until the end just like Jesus said listen my time has not yet come right my time is coming listen it's gonna be great the time when it comes it's coming it's not yet here and this wine is is coming first listen it's coming at the end the better wine is coming not first but at the end are you hearing me okay so we've got Jesus. Now listen to the posture of Jesus. Nowhere in there do we hear him going out before the guest and saying, hey, yo, it was me. It was me. I'm the one that made this happen. I'm the one that performed the miracle. Nowhere in here do we see Jesus exalt himself. He allows the bridegroom, right, since it's the bridegroom that pays for the wedding, who has all uh, the wine and has the food and is responsible for all of these things. And so he allowed the bridegroom to get the honor. I'm speaking to somebody here because many of you are in houses where you're under leadership and God is saying it doesn't matter who did it. I did it ultimately. But if you don't get credit, are, are you going to walk away from me? If you don't get credit, are you still going to serve me? If you don't, if you don't get credit for it, does it matter? Right. Can you can you let me get the glory at the end of the day? Does it matter who they think is responsible for it? Who's the one that caused them to to be healed and made whole? Do you have to tell everybody on Facebook? I laid hands on this woman and she was healed. Thank you, God, for using me. Or do I just say thank you, God, for oh, my God, this great thing that you did. And I'm so humbled that you would even use me. Right. It's, it's a position of his heart. In that moment, Jesus was like, I don't need to tell anyone what I've done. My time has not yet come. Many of you have walked in gifts and signs and wonders. Many of you have performed miracles. God has used you mightily. He's used you mightily. But people still don't know yet who you are. But your time is coming. It's coming. Okay. So next scripture. We're going to talk about Jesus talking about the kingdom of heaven. Yes, come on. My time is not yet come. But it's coming, Blanca. It's coming. Your time is coming. It's coming. It's coming. And it's because of how you're positioning your heart. It's how you're positioning your heart. We are to pray for our leaders. Now, I'm, I'm going to get to something. Man, I, I don't want to jump around, y'all. I'm getting excited. But I'm going I'm to try to slow myself down to, to, to give this to you in the proper way. So Jesus likens the kingdom of heaven to a master hiring laborers. We find this in Matthew 20. Matthew 20, verse 1 through 16. Matthew 20, verse 1 through 16. And we find this scripture here. And I have the English Standard Version and the New Living Translation. Now, I want to give you some understanding and I always tell people who follow me I do not spend time reading a lot of KJV now why KJV is great but guess what I don't speak in King James Version that's not my language of today that doesn't help me to understand and comprehend the word I can read it that way and I'm just trying to tell you also Jesus did not speak in King James so if I'm if I'm wrecking your theology, I apologize. But Jesus did not speak in King James. So find you a translation you could thank you. Only in Gladiator movies. Thank you, honey. You you know, find you a translation you can understand and read several until you begin to get the word and you digest it and you can walk it out. Okay, so I'm gonna share from New Living Translation, and I have these two things parallel that I can look at. I absolutely love this. Now Understanding time periods. Time is very significant in the word. So he's likening the kingdom of heaven to a master who is looking for laborers. So this is our God who's looking for laborers. And so what does he do? He goes out and very early in the morning, he calls some laborers in. He hires them to work the vineyard. They are doing the work of the ministry. Now he agreed, I'm going to pay you a full wage for the day's work. I'm going to pay you a full wage at nine o'clock. Now listen, early in the morning is one time, nine 
nine o'clock when we look at this nine o'clock in the morning he was passing through the marketplace now if we look at it in English Standard Version what it says here is going out about the third hour the third hour for those of you Bible scholars the third hour is nine o'clock in the morning the third hour is 9 a.m. so he goes out now it says early in the morning he hires some people at nine o'clock he starts the process now a lot of us start our work day at 9 a.m. so we start our work we hire someone at that time and if they're gonna work till the end of the day till six o'clock or whatever that's a full day's work wage right full day work of work a uh, day of work so he finds them and he hires them tell him he's gonna pay them he's gonna pay them properly at the end of the day so then they go and they work in the vineyard now at five tell me five o'clock listen I love this and uh, it is about the 11th hour so the 11th hour is what time again five o'clock 11th hour so a lot of times when we say God will bring your miracle at the 11th hour at that 11th hour it's not it's not 11 o'clock at night this is five o'clock five o'clock now listen didn't we say your work day is nine to like five or nine to yeah nine to six or whatever you get off work so he hired someone right at the very end of the day at five o'clock that afternoon he went and found some people and he says to them I love this, this is significant he says why haven't you been working today why haven't you been working and I'm speaking to some of you that have been sitting and waiting for someone to say go for someone to release you into the calling that God has for you God is saying to you why haven't you been working today why have you not been working and he's and they replied listen this is good this is good this is good to me he said the people say this it hurts my heart and blesses my heart they replied because no one hired us this is the outcast, right? These are the misfits. These are those who people have said are peculiar and weird and strange and, and, and you're not quite the same as someone else. You don't prophesy like everybody else does and, and, and the way that you deliver the word is a little different and I, and I don't know because you don't do it like Jamal Bryant does or, or you don't do it like T.D. Jakes does or you're not prophesying like Matthew Stevenson does. So, so, so are you hearing me? Okay, yes, I'm talking to you, Bettina. Anyway, so, yes. So I'm saying to many of you, people are saying, well, because you don't do it the right way, nobody has hired you. God, this is good. This is good to me. And so, listen, at that moment, listen, the 11th hour, the landowner says, come in. Come in and work in my vineyard. Guess what? I don't care that people have mislabeled you. I don't care that people have called you a misfit. I don't care that people have called you, you know, an outcast. I don't care if people said that you're peculiar and strange. I want you to come and work in my vineyard. I have need of you. I have need of you. And so what we find at the end of this, this is so meaty. What happens at the end of this time is we get those who were hired at 5 o'clock at the 11th hour. They were paid a full day's wage. They received the same dispensation of God's blessing upon their life as those who started at 9 o'clock in the morning. So for those of you who are late getting to the show, for those of you who are late accepting Christ, those who are in your 30s and 40s and 50s and finally coming to the knowledge of God, God said it's not too late for you. He says, no, they didn't hire you. He says, no, that's the reason why you've not been working. He says, but I have need of you. Come to my vineyard. Come to my vineyard. For those of you who are saying it's too late for me, uh, I was raising my kids and, and I was spending so much time doing this, God, and, and I was trying to, to be a wife and I was trying to go to school, but, but God, now I've come into the kingdom and Lord I feel like I'm late I feel like I'm behind the ball I feel like I've missed so much God said I have need of you I have need of you he said come to my vineyard and you shall receive the same rest you shall receive the same blessing the same glory upon your life as those who started early my God, he's catching us up. He's catching us up. So this word is for you, Blanca. So he's catching us up. Um, and so it says when they receive their pay, listen, those who were paid uh, the same amount as those who came in at five o'clock complained. I love this. I love what Jesus says. Now, this is in the red in your Bible. I love it. 
He says, uh, they were saying, those people worked only one hour and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. Jesus answered them, listen, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? For those of you who've been around longer, who've been in this thing for a while, who know it, who know it, who wear it like a religion, I'm sorry, those of you who are still doing that, who are not looking at the new coming, not making way and making room for God, for those that are God is about to use in this season, for those of you, he's saying to you, I have not been unfair. Though I'm raising up some people right next to you, right under you, and I'm using them mightily, he's says, I'm not being unfair. He said, didn't you agree to work all day? Didn't you agree to what, to, to my way of doing things? That's what he's saying. He says, take your money and go. I want to pay this last worker the same as you. He said, is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Meaning, is it against the law for the Lord to, to bless whom he wants to bless in the way that he wants to bless them? And he said, should you be jealous because I'm kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. That's good. That's good. And in, I'm not going to give you KJV, but in the English Standard Version, it says, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for Daenerys? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be the first and the first last. Yes, that's a Selah. That's a sit back moment. My God, my God. So I'm not done yet, y'all. I'm making this so clear to you. The outcast, the misfit, the unusual, the peculiar. God says, come now. He says, come on. Your time is in the 11th hour. You are at the 11th hour right now, and I have need of you. And he said, the clock is ticking. And listen, your time is coming, and it's coming quickly. Your time is coming quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your time is coming quickly. It's at the 11th hour and you are at the gate. And God says, I'm getting ready to make room for you. I'm getting ready to open up the door and I'm getting ready to usher you in. Come on. Grafted in. We're grafted in. Uh, we're As Gentiles, we've been grafted into this religion, this relationship with God. And I say religion only in the sense that it's our, our understanding of Christ. It's the kingdom. It's the kingdom, and God has grafted us into this relationship with him. And so the same way God said, I'm making room for you, I'm grafting you in, it is an unusual time. Amen. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about positioning. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I love it. No, God does not look at time the same way that we do, not at all. Amen. Okay. Got a couple of other people to talk about, and I'm um, not anywhere near to wrapping up, so please uh, stay with me, hang with me. David, I love when I get an opportunity to teach, and it's been a couple of weeks since I've had a chance to teach, so I'm chewing on this word, and I'm digesting at the same time that you are. Yes, people are losing their minds because of the absence of purpose. Amen. That is good. That's good. Okay, so let's talk a bit about David. Uh, God and I'm saying this to you, he has you on reserve. God has many of you on reserve. David was on reserve. David was on reserve. David was anointed three times. Are you hearing me? He was anointed three times. David was anointed first. And listen, only Samuel and God knew why he was being anointed. Y'all don't believe me? Let's go there. First Samuel 16. And it talks about how we've got Samuel who's grieving over Saul. We know what's going. Come on. Yes, we're going to talk about it, Silent Night. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. He said, how long will you grieve over Saul? He said, I have rejected him. I've rejected him. And he says, now, bless you. Oh, thank you for joining, Maddie. Bless you. And so he says, fill your horn with oil and go. So he tells him, I want you to anoint him. Now, listen, he is saying to Samuel clearly, you are anointing another king. Thank you, James. You're anointing. He, he is my welcome committee. You are going to anoint another king. I have rejected Saul, and now we are setting another king in place. Now, listen, this is where it gets good. Gets good. He anoints. He looks at all of the sons. We know the story. And they finally have to call for David, who's out in the field, taking care of business. Are you hearing me? I'm speaking to many of you who are waiting in the wings. Don't wait and sit. Wait and do. Remember, it might be the 11th hour for you, but God said the reason why you have not been included is because no one has hired you, but God has hired you. So do not sit. Continue to do and move. David was about his father's business. 
which was tending the sheep. He was about his father's business. Yes, work in my gift. He's working out in the field. He finally comes in. He gets anointed with oil. Now check this out. When he anointed him, it says in 12, and he sent and brought him in. And now he was ruddy and beautiful. We know that. Arise, anoint him for this is he. This is God speaking to Samuel. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Come on. God has anointed some of you in the midst of your brothers. Now here's what's so profound to me. And this is not even in my notes, but this is what gets me. Samuel anointed him, heard from God that he shall be king. I've rejected Saul. And this is the man I've chosen. Anoint him and send him forth. Anoint him. So all Samuel did was respond to God's word. Did he tell David? Did he tell David's dad? Did he go to Jesse and say, just so you know, your son is going to be king. Did he tell David? No. Many of you have been anointed in previous seasons. I almost want to jump. I almost want to run. You have been anointed in previous seasons. Hands have been laid upon you and you thought it was for one thing, but it's been for something else. And God is yet beginning to reveal it. God is getting ready to open up what he anointed you for. He didn't tell you, but hands were laid on you. You received a great baptism. You didn't know why. And God is getting ready to tell you why. Come on. This is good. Samuel dies. Are you hearing me? Samuel dies. The messenger, the one who anointed him, dies before he can ever tell anybody why he anointed David. Follow your word. I'm telling you, this is good to me. So I feel like I'm sweating. You see, I'm in, I'm in this now. Anyway, so this is good. This is so good to me. He anoints him and listen in verse 13 he took the horn of oil anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the lord rushed ha. how many of you have been anointed with oil have been anointed even by hands and the spirit of the lord rushed upon you something happened on the inside of you you didn't know what it was but something happened it rushed upon david from that day forward and listen next scripture at the very same moment i truly believe at the very second that samuel was faithful over what god told him to do he anointed david at that very moment that the spirit of the lord rushed upon david it lifted off of saul come on now are you hearing me come on blessed vegan like fire shut up in your bones come on at that moment at the moment that the spirit of the lord rushed in it lifted from Saul at that same moment. Had Samuel not been faithful, what would this have looked like? Had Samuel said, I want to continue to mourn for Saul. Lord, I'm going to pray that you, you know, change your mind about Saul. Had he sat there and waited, what would this have been like? So I, I believe that God would have raised up another prophet. He would have said, since you won't behave, I'm going to raise up another one. Uh, another one that's been waiting in the wings. Hello? Okay, anyway. So he anointed him. The spirit of the Lord rushed in upon, yes, come on, just like Moses is dead, come on. The spirit of the Lord rushed in upon David and the spirit lifted from Saul. Now listen, here's where this gets good to me. Samuel knew the purpose of the oil. He knew the purpose that as this oil ran down the head of David, he knew that he was speaking into him that you shall be king. No words are spoken. We don't see anything here. David is not aware. And you can imagine if you told someone at their infancy, at the point of their immaturity, that I have called you to be a prophet. I have called you to be an apostle. How would you handle it if I told you too early in your process? Would you have been able to be humble? Would you have been able to do what I called you to do and to wait for the process if I told you early? If I told you where I was going to take you, that I was going to take you to this mountaintop experience, that you were going to have many sons and daughters, if I told you that in an early season, how would you have handled it? So he didn't tell David. We find one year later, David is 15 at this point. At 16, he slays Goliath. A year later, he is still a shepherd boy. He is still about his father's business. David did not have this knowledge that he shall be king. And so he did not go to the palace door, knock on the door and say, yeah, I'm 15. But you know what? I have been anointed and I just need to tell you, uh, you need to start packing your bags. Um, I got all my stuff here. Me and my, my cattle and me and my horse and my donkeys have been carrying <clears throat> my bedding. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm about to move in. So for many of you, I need to say this. There are many of you who've been serving under somebody. And the one that you're serving, you may be set to replace. That the one that you're sitting under now, the leadership that you're under, God is empowering you and maybe readying you to be the replacement. Now, we find with David, he sits under Saul. Now listen, 
one thing about him, it's, it's his positioning again. We find in 1 Samuel 16, he was first anointed. 2 Samuel 2, I want to give that to you. 2 Samuel 2, he's about 23. He gets anointed as the king over Judah. So he gets one tribe, right? We know that the tribes have been separated and broken apart. Crazy Saul and everything else that has happened during this season has like messed up the kingdom. It's not all in one. So, so he becomes the king over Judah. And then we find number of completion seven years later at the age of 30, 2 Samuel 5, we find that David becomes the king over all Israel. Now, this was a process. So from the age of 15, finally, the age of about 30 is when he becomes actually king over everything. There was time. There was process. Now, did David kick up his feet? <sighs> Polish his nails off? He was doing work. He was doing work and he was a soldier and you know, he was busy. He was about God's business in the process. Now, when he became aware that he should be king and that the first anointing was that, I don't know. I really don't know when he became aware of that, but I'm sure at the time that he began to play for Saul. Now look at how God will position you right underneath the person who you're called to replace. God will position you right in that place. Now, are you in that place to destroy the leader? No. Look at David. Look at how humble he is. Even though Saul chased after him, wanted to torment him, wanted to destroy him, he did not rip the man's garments off of him. He tore a little piece to let him know, listen, I could have killed you last night, but I honor you as a leader. I would not do that. No matter what you do to me, I shall be faithful. And as he played for him, we know that he played for him. He served Saul for a season. He served Saul for a season. Now I want to share this with you. I hadn't planned to. Second Samuel one, what we find is this. Now this is right before he's anointed King of Judah. This says something to me. It speaks something to me profoundly. Now, right before he gets his true commissioning as a King, as a King over Judah, what happens? Saul dies. The chapter before Saul dies. And what is David's attitude? David's attitude is to mourn. Did he jump and shout? Did he rejoice over the death of his enemy? Did he do that? He was remorseful. It says that they stayed and David fell to the ground, prostrated himself, and he wept. My God. He asks, how do you know that, that he is dead? And they tell the story and he begins to cry. There's more that he does too, but I'll let you read that on his own, on, on your own. He, he recognized that this, per, this person whose hand was uh, connected to it, that his life must be taken. So anyway, I say all that to say he lamented over Saul and over Jonathan. He lamented, he cried, he wept, he ripped his clothing over the death of his enemy. Because it's God's anointed. That's God's business at the end of the day. Okay, so I'm going to take you beyond this. So I love the story of David. I absolutely love it. All right, so we know that many of you have been anointed and do not yet fully comprehend the weight of the calling that's upon your life. Many of you have been set aside for such a time as this. And as I'm saying to many of you, you have been put on reserve that the kingdom is coming and the kingdom is calling you. Though you have not been working, many of you have not been working. God said, because no one would hire you, but God said, I am hiring you in this season and I'm placing you on reserve. I'm placing you on reserve. And, and so I'm saying to you, the weight of this calling, you do not yet comprehend. When hands have been laid upon you, the words that they spoke to you, you didn't even understand what they were saying. Or maybe it was not audible words, but you received that impact. I remember there was a season that I was with my mother and she laid hands on me with oil and my whole head was on fire. And she can attest to this. My head was on fire and I hit the ground, like boom, like hit the ground. And that doesn't always happen, right? Some of us have done a courtesy fall before is that just me okay is that just me you did a courtesy fall you're like okay you keep pushing on me and you're gonna stand here for 15 minutes okay I I'm just gonna fall because we need to move on with the service let me just do the courtesy fall so we can just move on with the service amen okay let's let's, let's be honest okay so 
But this was not a courtesy fall. Literally, boom, hit the ground. And later on, I kept asking her. I said, Mom, what was in that oil? And she just began to laugh like she could not stop laughing. I said, but no, really. No, but seriously. And I kept saying, no, 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 but seriously. But seriously, my head was on fire. Like, was there cinnamon in it? Was it some kind of oil? And my mom just was laughing. I was like, no, Mom, like, really, really, really. What was in the oil? And she said there was nothing in the oil. It was nothing. There was nothing. Literally, it was the anointing. It was the power of God. When when the apostle, who's my mom, when the apostle laid hands upon me, because it wasn't my mom laying hands upon me, it was the calling upon her, and it was God himself that laid hands upon me, and the fire of God hit my head. My whole head was on fire, and I hit the floor. Now, what that anointing was for, didn't have a clue. Didn't know I would be walking in what I'm walking in today. But surely God knew it. And my mother didn't need to release it to me. The apostle didn't need to speak to me and say, this is why I've anointed you. This is why God had me lay hands upon you. So I'm saying to many of you who've been anointed and God has laid hands upon you to do something and it's not yet been revealed, but it's about to be revealed because this is the 11th hour and God is beginning to reveal who he's called you to be. Now the word, the word tells us that the creation groans, groans for the manifestation of the sons and daughters. It wants them to rise up. It's looking for the sons of God. It's waiting for us to arise into our place. I just add daughters because I recognize that some people don't understand that gender has nothing to do with anything. If if you're a son of God, that means you receive the inheritance. I always say, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. Yes, I might be a daughter, but listen to me. I am a son of God. And so the earth is groaning, waiting, 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 waiting for the re to the revelation to see who the sons of God are. Will we stand up? Will we stand up in this season? And so God is preparing this new guard to come. And I'm saying to you, we find that the calling upon your life is so strong. Your situation right now, your circumstances right now, the position you find yourself in today cannot contain the destiny on the inside of you. The place that you are in now, the frustrating place, the place where you're watching things not quite be done right. You, you see that people are not really about God's business. People are more concerned about platforms and, and microphones and more concerned about accolades and how many Periscope followers they have and how many hearts they receive. People are not concerned really about God's business. And you're seeing that. And many of you who weep at night about it, God says, I'm about to do something about it. God said, I have saved the best for last. God said, get ready. He says, because you got next. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, you've got next. He said, I'm preparing you and I have prepared you in a dark place. I prepared you on the backside of the mountain. I prepared you in a place where no one can see you. I prepared you in a place of brokenness, of loss, of failure, of destruction. Even I prepared you in that place to be a tool for my kingdom in this coming dispensation of time. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Cause you got next. It's the 11th hour and your time is about to come. And God just wants to know, have you positioned your heart? Have you positioned yourself to be faithful? Humility comes first. Humility comes before elevation. You know, so whoever you're with now and you're serving with gladness, ask God to show you that man or woman of God's heart that you might pray for them to cover them in the season. Truly, you will not get your own well until you've been faithful over another man or woman's well. Be faithful where you are, where God has called you to be in the season that you've been in, and God will begin to release you into your own place. Listen, and then no devil in hell, no person from your past can pull you from it. What God has for you is for you. And guess what? Then you'll be qualified. Literally darts in my back and things that people have said, the Lord said to me clearly, he said, now you're qualified for the call. Listen, listen, I'm telling you, persecution, all of those things, they come to qualify you for the call. So don't despair those things. Say, okay, God, that means you're positioning me. You're getting me ready for what you have for me. I am waiting at the gate to be let out. And God said, yes, I'm positioning you to begin to go forth. The kingdom shall be advanced. And he's raising up a new guard in this season. My last thing I wanted to share with you, and I had so much here. I want to tell you what the word reserve means. I, I absolutely love this. Listen, God is raising you up right beneath the nose of the current man or woman. God will have someone waiting in the wings on reserve. That's what God will do. Reserve means a supply 
of a commodity not needed for immediate use, but available if required. It is a supply or a commodity of something that's not needed immediately, but will be available if needed. It's ready for use. It's ready for use. Now listen, God has you already ready for use. You're ready already. And God is having you on the reserve. Now listen, it also means a force or body of troops kept back from action to reinforce or protect others. Now listen, this to me is profound. It says, or additional to the regular forces. Now that's not important. It's available in an emergency, but listen to this part. It says a force or body of troops kept back from action to reinforce or protect others. So the position that you're in right now, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever position you're in now, you are there and have been strategically placed to protect and cover others. Now listen, if that's not a job for you, God has given you a job to do right where you are. He has strategically placed you. He has you on reserve, but in this place where he has you on reserve, he has placed you in a strategic position that you might protect and cover and keep those who are in your area. You got a job to do. You have a job to do. Now lastly, I will say this. The other person that was on reserve, and we know this story is Rachel. Rachel was on reserve. Jacob saw Rachel. We see this in Genesis, the 29th chapter. She was beautiful and lovely, and they had interaction and communication, and he loved her immediately. That is who he wanted. Uh, the name Rachel means ooh, which is like a lamb. It's like our precious lamb, and that's what uh, her name meant. She was precious. She was pre precious to her father Laban and precious to Jacob, and he desired to marry her. But what did Laban do? Laban gave him Leah, and Leah, her name means weary or grieved. So I'm speaking to some of you right now. Now listen to me. Many of you are in a season of Leah. You're in a season of being weary and being grieved in the position that you're at. And listen, it took seven years before Jacob was able to apprehend his promise, which was Rachel, but he worked for it. He worked for it. He did not just snatch it and take it. He did not say, oh, forget it. I'm just going to go to another place. He stayed and was faithful over what he needed to do to achieve and to receive his promise. Now listen, some of you are in a season of being weary and being grieved, but I'm saying to you, your promise is coming. You are at your 11th hour. You are the next on tap. God has you ready, standing on the platform with your feet, ready to come to the place that he has for you. And literally as he raises you up on this platform, no man, no devil, nobody will be able to snatch you out. God is representing many of you. He's taking you to a new place and he's going to establish the place where he puts you on. It's a place that's going to be firm and it's going to be a wide path so your ankles don't turn. God is taking many of you and giving you hinds feet to place you upon your high places. He's going to take you to the mountaintop. And listen, my God is not a God of plateau. He's a God of greater and greater and glory and glory. He's a God that's going to take you higher than you can imagine. It says in the word that he's going to do exceedingly abundantly. Now listen, not just more than we think. It says exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think above all you can pray above your wildest dreams literally God is going to blow your mind those of you who've been waiting those who've been called misfits outcasts peculiar weird strange those of you God is raising you up I'm telling you, he's raising you up and he has preserved the best for last. He's preserved the best and the last shall be first. I'm telling you, it is your season. You're at the 11th hour. Do not give up. Do not stop being faithful where you are. Continue to humble yourself and God is going to raise you up. It's coming. It's coming. I love that scripture. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard all of that. But what the word says later, it says, but... We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So even though no eye has seen, no ear has heard, yeah, that's great. That's for those unbelievers. But guess what? God has allowed it to enter into our heart. He's allowed us to take a glimpse into our future. You have seen it in your dreams. You have written things down that are much bigger than you and are beyond your scope. Those are things that God has set for you. It is greater because we have the mind of Christ. We can know those things and God begins to reveal it over time, just like with David.
He was anointed. He didn't know it, but soon he came in to know it. All of a sudden, God began to bless you. God began to open up. God began to open up his book, open up his story, and show David who he made him to be. Remember, I told you that when the Lord called me as a shepherd, all I thought was, I'm like David. I'm a shepherd. And then I, the more I looked at David, I'm like, David was a warrior. Not only, you know, about him slaying things, but he started with Goliath. You know, he fought a lion and a bear. Come on. David was in there, and he was a worshiper. He wrote some of the Psalms. He was an intercessor, right? And then he was a king. He had authority. All of these things together. Mighty, powerful. God has placed greatness on the inside of you. And listen, listen, he has placed it on the inside of you for such a season as this. I'm telling you, truly, you are God's secret weapons. You are God's secret weapons. You're secret. You're hidden. Many don't know. Those who are serving, um, you know, in places where you have someone over you, they don't know who you are. They don't recognize the glory of God on the inside of you, but that's okay. Maybe they're not supposed to know. Just like the Lord said to me that day, I have you on reserve. I have you on reserve, daughter. I have you on reserve, son. I have you on reserve. So the fact that they don't recognize you and they don't notice you and they don't understand who you are, it's okay. I didn't let them see who you are. I've got you on reserve. But guess what? You've got next. You've got next. So God bless you. That is the word for tonight. Um, I, I thank those of you who have stayed on this time. Uh, and, I, and I look, I managed to go under um, an hour. Bless God. I pray that this was encouraging for you. Come on. Look at that. Color me privy. Thank you. Listen, in the military, reserves never know when they will be called. They must be ready at all times. Come on now. Look at that. Awesome. Love you. Please text me, Blanca. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Ty. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Silent King. Was this a blessing? Did you guys get something from it? Let me get the hearts. I hate to say that. Thank you. You needed it. Thank you. Bless God. Thank you, Bettina. Bless you, daughter. Bless you. Bless you. Amen, Shamika. Yeah, this is this is the place that God has me in in this season is to encourage those who are coming. You are coming. And literally, I see, I see the kingdom just coming. You bless you, Janet. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you for joining me. Bless you, Leslie, my daughter. Good to see you, sweetheart. Yes, you are coming. I spoke. Thank you. Oh, amen. Bless God. He answered a question. I love that. You got, come on, say it. We got next. We got next. Come on now. Yes. Hang in there. Hang in there. It may seem like it, but look, bless you. When we look at this, yes, we got next. Let's say it. We got next. Come on now. We've got next. So we look at David and look at the time it took for him. And I think the difficulty is, is we see for many of us who have a heart for God and who, who are pastors and, and our hearts are for the sheep. We see things that are going astray. We see that things are not being done right. And we want to just jump in there. But God said, I have you on reserve. I have you on reserve. It's going to be worth the wait. Yes, Bettina. It's going to be worth the wait. Thank you, Erica. It's going to be worth the wait. Bless you. Thank you, Alvina. Thank you for joining me. We got next. Next. And that's your phrase for today. We got next. And people may not even understand what you're saying as you look at things that are happening in the ministry that you're a part of or a place that you go and you say it's not quite right. You know what? But we got next, Lord. We got next, Lord. We are we are ready. Now, so that's when you think about it. When you're standing at, in the wings, think about um, uh, an alternative person, an, an alternate, an alternate, right? So, or someone who's a, who's a substitute, right? So you are staying there and the person who's dancing, you're the substitute or you're the sub, you're the person who's the alternate in case they don't do what they need to do or in case they get hurt, right? But what happens to that person who's the sub, the alternate? They have to know every line. They have to know every move and every dance. They have to know every chord to play. The alternate or the sub still has to know all of the work. Still has to know it, though they wait in the wings. And literally God is saying, but guess what? I have you on reserve. He said, I don't see you in second position. I don't see you in third or fourth position. He says, I see you in number one position. He said, stand and wait. And I get ready to open the gate because I'm telling you, we are at the 11th hour. Truly, we're at the 11th hour and God is calling many forth. He's calling many forth. And he says, it is now your season. It is your time. He says, I give you the kingdom. I give you the kingdom. I give you the kingdom. Advance it. Advance it. 
And that's what I see happening. I see God raising up the misfits, the orphaned. I, I see him raising up strangers. I, I, people who people are like, where are you? Where have you been? You know, you haven't been here long enough. You know, I don't know. You've just been in this church for a couple of weeks and now you want to prophesy? All of that. All of that. Yes, finish strong. All of that. But God is saying, like he said to those workers, he says, what do you care about what I do with my own blessings or things that are mine? Why should it matter to you, my generosity and kindness, though you've been working for this long and I can raise someone up at the 11th hour and have them pursue my glory and I can have them push forward my kingdom further than you have so far? What does it matter to you? And God is speaking now. So anyway, I won't belabor the point. Thank you for joining me. Bless you. I pray that this was an encouragement to you where you are. Know that you are waiting in the wings that God has you as a secret weapon. He has you on reserve. And they asked him, where did you come from? Come on. Look at that. I believe it. I believe it, Leslie. Literally, people will hear you open your mouth. And I've heard people say that about four or five times to me. They go, where did you come from? Or, or, or I get this, where have you been? I get one or one or two. I get, where'd you come from? Or I get, where have you been? So either one I get. And, and, and I, all I can say is now I know. Now I have a language, right? Come on, Bettina. Amen. Now I have a language. And now you have a language. When people ask, where have you been? Where'd you come from? Say, God had me on reserve. I love that. All right, April. Yes. So, so tell them, God had me on reserve. For such a time as this, he had me on reserve for such a time as this. Amen. 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 All right. I'm excited. So, Father, I pray right now for your people, these your holy people, this holy priesthood. But not only that, God, the true sons of the kingdom, sons of God, Lord, that they will arise, God, that even as the earth groans and it moans, Lord, for the manifestation of them to come forth. God, I thank you right now that on the inside you placed a seed, a seed that shall produce a mighty harvest, God. The seed on the inside shall break forth, God, and it shall draw others to you. We thank you right now, God, for these new kingdom people, those who've been set aside, who've been misaligned, who've been mishandled, who have been looked over, those who've been rejected and abandoned, God, I speak to them now that their season is coming, that you're calling them forth for such a time as this, though though it be the 11th hour, oh God, you have allowed for this time to come, Lord, to call them forth into the work that you have set for them. I thank you right now, God, that they shall be endowed with great power from on high, God, that they shall walk in miracle signs and wonders. Truly, they are believers and your word says that these signs shall follow and so father we're expecting to see mighty exploits in your name in this coming season god not next year not five years but in this coming season we expect to see miracle signs and wonders we expect to see the, the dead race we, we expect to see the blind to see we expect to see the lame walk we expect to see the eradication of a major diseases god we expect to see your people supernaturally blessed call us forth into the vineyard, God, that we might do a work for you. And in the process, God, we humble our hearts before you, but we come boldly to the throne. We come boldly, Lord, knowing that we shall obtain mercy and favor in the time that we need it. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we thank you in advance, God, for calling us to the kingdom for such a time as this, God. There's no greater time, no greater season than now. And so we thank you, God, because we've got next. And we've got it, God. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit shall guide us into all wisdom. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, be encouraged. Um, I look forward to touching base with you guys soon. Um, my daughter Bettina and I were planning to do a scope together. We are going to review the movie Risen. For those of you who haven't um, even seen it in the movies um, or seen any scenes or trailers for it, it's a movie about uh, after Jesus dies. It's awesome. It's a movie about after Jesus dies and what happens and this whole thing about to prove or disprove the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, it's going to have you shouting and jumping. It's not quite as gory as um, you get with the uh, Passion of the Christ, but it's another movie of that magnitude. I truly believe it. We're going to review it around noon or so on Wednesday on my scope. So we will be sharing it with you. There's Bettina right there. We'll be sharing it with you. Greetings. Bless you, Key. 
Good to see you. Um, we will be sharing that um, just to give you an idea what the movie is about and to let you know to see it. It just truly blessed me. I was in tears and like it was like half of my Periscope messages and I was just laid out and I was shouting in the middle of the theater. I didn't care. I was jumping up and down. I was hitting and her teenager love you. Yeah, I was hitting Bettina. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, do you not see what they just talked about? Yes, we want to go again. And they are showing a free movie again, which I am planning to go. We'll talk about that, Bettina. Anyway, so all that being said, for those of you who want to know, thank you, thank you. More about me, my name is Dr. DeAndrea, and the reason why it's that, it's not religious. I have a PhD in political science, so I am actually a doctor, um, but I, I think the greatest thing I can tell you about me is not my credentials, it's I'm a servant of the Most High God. I love him, and I love his people so very much. I have a heart for the people of God. Um, I believe that God has me in the earth um, as a reconciler of the brethren to bring people together, to love on them, to build them up. That is who I am and what I'm called to do. And so it's so important that we know what we're called to do, that not so much staying in our lane, not that, but that we know what God placed on the inside of us for the earth and to share. Bless you, Ty. And so I say that to say that is who I am. I love the kingdom. I love the kingdom and I love the people who are building it up. Yes, I'm for the lost. Yes, I'm always going to speak to the lost, but God has made me as an equipper of his body. Bless you, April. That's who he made me, to equip his body. And so that's what I spend time with. So I wanted to share that with you. Feel free to follow me on Scope. Follow me on Twitter. Um, catch me on Facebook. Um, I have a, a website that is coming sometime soon. God is getting ready to do some other shifting in my life, which I will be letting you guys know as God begins to do it. He's expanding me. He's increasing me and he's enlarging my territory. And what did I tell you that means? When God enlarges your territory, what he does is he gives you provision. So as he enlarges your territory, you take uh, authority over that area, but you also take responsibility to pray and to cover those in that increased area that he's given you. And so God is expanding me and increasing me to be able to pour out more. The job of leaders is not to seek remuneration, to seek support, to seek anything. The job of a leader is to pour and to share. And that's what's important to me. So that's my other daughter, Leslie. Love you, sweetheart. So I say all that to say, follow me um, on YouTube. You can find me, Dr. DeAndrea, on YouTube and um, subscribe and then you'll get these because I post them a couple of days later. So God bless you. That is all of my, I think I did it all, Bettina. I said all the things I'm supposed to say. So God bless you. I love you all and I will be back again. We'll see you on Wednesday. Take care. Bye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Shamika, love you. Love you, Leslie. Bless you, Silent. Thank you for joining me. Sorry, Deborah. I just finished, but you can catch the replay. For those who catch the replay, bless you. Thank you. And you know you can give hearts in the replay, folks. You can give hearts. You can give hearts in the replay. So thank you, guys. All right. God bless. Bye.